Good morning guys, this is EJ back again with another video for us to take a look at and, you know, review uh, the, the creation process, which is what my channel is all, all about. Um, this one is uh, an artwork called Tricycle Reader. And um, real quick before I go over, like, uh, what my inspiration was and where my idea came from for this particular illustration i guess i'll just go ahead and proceed talking about what's going on in the video because as we can see in the video there's already something that's already there existing and the reason why is because this artwork is an old artwork i'm taking up an old artwork that i started uh i want to say around 2014 or so 2015 it's a very very old artwork that i never got around to finishing and I decided to finish it. So I picked it up sometime in 2017. Uh, if I'm not, no, no, no. I picked it up sometime in 2018, but I did not finish it until the end of 2019. So it's been an on again, off again, five year artwork process. Um, it took forever. <laughs> Let me just say that. Um, so yeah. <laughs> But basically, uh, the very first thing that we saw was uh, a little girl or like an adolescent girl reading a book inside a tricycle. And this is going to get really confusing for most viewers because when I say tricycle, I actually mean Filipino tricycles. And Filipino tricycles are basically like a motorbike uh, that has a roof on top of it and a sidecar that also has a roof, you know, like a self-contained um, housing, not housing, but a self-contained uh, cab that you could, you know, be a passenger in. Uh, it's basically like a taxi service in Philippines. So like we can see that right now. That's like the cab side of, of the tricycle. So basically like the way that first image is set up is that you know the viewer is right next to the bike and then looking into the cab and we see the girl and then I did another prompt so initially I had the girl inside and then I decided you know what let's try some other uh, poses and some other um, drawings basically and so I decided hey uh, let's do one where Instead of the passenger being the reader inside the cab, let's have the tricycle driver waiting for passengers um, to ferry. And she's reading a book, you know, while waiting for passengers to ferry or whatnot. Uh, and so um, I drew that real quick uh, and I did two concepts and I sent it out to my sisters and my friends and asked for opinions, which one would they would they prefer for me to um, illustrate farther and obviously the the this particular one is the one that won and so this is the one I decided to develop basically and um, so yeah uh, after I did the concepts I did a 3d mock-up of it um, which I didn't get the chance to record it. Uh, we saw that just not too long ago. There was like a 3D mock-up of it. And then I basically did a quick outline sketch or a quick sketch on top of that 3D mock-up and now I'm cleaning up my sketch. Um, I wanna let you know now that I went through so many iterative process throughout this illustration. I mean, you can tell that the very beginning of it does not look like the end of it because there's a lot of I guess you could say mutations or you know different directions that this illustration went through which is really cool I mean I really 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 love the end product um, so yeah this illustration went through so many changes um, so yeah but while this uh, outline sketch is going on and while I'm trying to you know do this outline sketch let me talk real quick about what my inspiration was so my inspiration is basically to illustrate the Filipino tricycle and I started this series of paintings where I try to paint something you know from my Filipino heritage from my Philippines heritage and mixed it up 
together with my Texas heritage, you know, so I did like an illustration of Patintero that is being played by American kids, which is really interesting. And um, I did another one, uh, a bunch of American kids playing Jack Stone. And so uh, I started a series a while back. I haven't done anything in that series. So this, I guess, would be like my third entry to that series where, you know, I'm paying homage to the Filipino tricycle um, except as you can see some sometime during this video process you'll see it changed a lot and it div uh, it diverged a lot from the original idea of a Filipino tricycle but um, real quick I guess to explain what a Filipino tricycle is and why it's hard for some people to understand the concept of this vehicle um, uh, Filipino tricycles are essentially like like a taxi service in Philippines, but like a really cheap one. Um, motorcycles in general are very cheap uh, form of transportation. I mean, one can buy a brand new motorcycle for like about two thousand to five thousand dollars. I mean, it's that cheap compared to like uh, a sedan car that starts at the very minimum around ten thousand dollars U.S. dollars. Um. So, motorbikes are very cheap to make and what a lot of entrepreneurs do in the Philippines is, you know, they take like a, a bike that they bought and, you know, ask a metal welder um, to create basically this frame around this motorbike, you know, so they would create like a roof. You could kind of see it in my 3D mock-up right now. Uh, one of the things that the metal welder will do is that they'll put a roof on top of the motorbike so that, you know, the driver wouldn't get wet. And of course, they'll have the sidecar where that's where the passengers sit uh, when when they get ferried around and, you know, when the drivers were take the passengers, basically. It's a, pop, it's a popular form of transportation in the Philippines. It's, you know, basically everywhere. If you go to fit, visit my old country, you'll see it everywhere. Now, the thing with tricycles, though, and the reason why um, it's confusing for non-Filipinos to understand is because um, there's many different versions of the tricycle um, that you'll see in Southeastern Asian countries. Um and I guess let me explain real quick what I mean about the confusion that happened. When I initially did this illustration, like this one that we're looking at right now, this particular one. I remember posting this on Sketch Zone. It's Discord channel that I'm in. And um, maybe it was Discord channel, maybe it was conceptart.org. I don't remember which one um, made comments about it. But one of the biggest comments um, that they had was that they couldn't understand what the vehicle looked like just because it, they're not familiar with it most of the ones that were giving critiques were from western countries you know america australia um people from iran um basically you know non-filipino countries were you know making a critique on it and they're like well we don't understand what the vehicle is like why is there a roof on the motorbike you know that was one of the bigger things that that they could wrap their heads around and so eventually you'll see me expand on the illustration and just like put the whole motorbike which is what I'm doing right now actually okay yeah that's perfect timing but right now I decided like after I heard that uh, comment that I'm like okay I really need to you know expand the illustration and which is what I'm doing right now and what we're seeing right now, what we're looking at, is your traditional Filipino tricycle. You know, it's not fancy like my final illustration is. Um, so, uh, when I was developing this illustration, it first started out inside the cab, you know. And I really like the one inside the cab. But, you know, people, like I said, my friends and family... Uh, chose the, uh, the uh, driver uh, to be the illustrated one instead of the passenger and so when I switched I initially just wanted to focus in on the driver because I really wanted the illustration to just be about 
the person not really so much as about the motorbike or the tricycle but then when i got the comments about them not understanding what the tricycle looks like i ended up going you know what let me just illustrate the tricycle together with the person which is what this whole image is i re-rendered my 3d image just so that i could get all of the full body of the tricycle and the motorbike in there and uh, real quick while the bike was on there that 3d bike is by fully crescent that i got from blenderswap.com i'm not even sure if if that bike is still there because i know blend swap like a uh, switch format or something and they did an upgrade and some of the old models that used to be there aren't there anymore so i'm not really sure if that bike is on there but i just want to give a shout out to that artist because you know it was a really nice bike that i used um but anyway so um so yeah uh, what we're looking at right now is your traditional filipino tricycle you know it's really simple because um, the whole idea of the filipino tricycle is that it's supposed to be cheap right um and oh yeah real quick my brain is everywhere before i mention the filipino tricycle um or before i proceed about how the filipino tricycle is made and whatnot um, there's other versions of tricycles in in other Asian countries, especially in like Thailand or Vietnam. I'm I'm not sure which country that is. They have a version of a tricycle called tuk tuk. I think is what they call it. And instead of having like the passengers be on right next to the bike, the passengers are actually sitting behind the bike. And so, you know, when I was getting the commentary about like they needed to know what the vehicle looks like, you know, what it's supposed to look like and all that stuff um i guess part of the reason why some of my western friends are confused as to the shape of this whole thing was because there are different versions of tricycles in other asian countries so but in philippines our tricycles are shaped like this where the passengers are right next to the bike instead of behind the bike so now that i got that clarified um so um what we were looking at originally was like the traditional, you know, Filipino by tricycles. And Filipino tricycles are meant to be cheap, like supposedly, or they're supposed to be cheap to manufacture, cheap to make. They're not really fancy like my my fully finished illustration. Um, so my initial illustration was just really, really simple. You know, I was just going to illustrate... Um, the Filipino tricycle as it is and even though it's cheaply made what's really interesting and unique about Filipino tricycles is the decals like um, if you go to Philippines and you witness our you know Filipino made vehicles it's it's very very colorful the decals are very artistic um, we also have this vehicle that we make um, home brewed called the Jeepney based off the jeep and again it's another passenger vehicle of sorts and um yeah just like the tricycles it has you know uh amazing decals that artists would put on there they're just very very colorful vehicles and originally that's what i intended you know i just wanted to be tr like a traditionalist but then I went off the beaten path, which is what we're seeing right now. Um, so, since this illustration I, I've been working on and off for like two or three years, right? And in the past few years, I've been very, very interested in this whole Baroque, in the whole Baroque period, the Rococo period and the flourishes and the floral designs that they have because it's so intricate and and if you try to sculpt it, <laughs> it's very hard to sculpt. <laughs> but that's where my idea came from, you know, where I was like, you know, I could do this whole traditional Filipino tricycle, but I can also just be like, be vivacious and just go wild, which is kind of what I ended up doing, you know. I kind of ended up doing this whole mishmash of ideas with this illustration where i took the filipino tricycle and put it 
in in this era that looked like <laughs> the Baroque period, which is like the 17th, 18th century. So I guess my illustration you could pretty much say is like an alternative timeline of some sort, you know? Like what if, you know, 17th, 18th century Rococo period had the industrial age set earlier and and some of the vehicles that got made in that time period was the Filipino tricycle, which is what this illustration is. It's it's a very cool concept, quite admittedly, and I like it, you know, as an exploration of design, as an exploration of like what ifs. I, I think this design is very, very cool, you know, because you'll never, ever see something like this in Philippines. And the reason why is because Baroque and Rococo design they're very hard to pull off i mean with the whole floral flourishes you kind of have to sculpt it you kind of have to you know especially if you're doing like metal welding that's a lot of work to do you know and i mean typically filipino tricycles are made to be cheap like they're supposed to be cheap because uh, most of the operators are not very wealthy people you know and they're just your standard joe trying to make a simple buck you know and so they try to do things as cheaply as possible and so that's part of the reason why this i love love this illustration because you'll never ever see this kind of filipino tricycle to exist anywhere in the world you know so it's like my own originality i'm like yeah i'm happy about this and it came out so good you know because i'm very very <laughs> um critical of my own work you know I'm so critical of my own work that I'm like, you know, this artwork sucks, this artwork blows, I spent so much time on it, I don't like it, blah blah blah. But this one, I spent a lot of time on, um, and it came out really good, you know? So, I, I really love it, but anyways, so that's the idea between this piece. Um, I was influenced by the Rococo Ro 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 period, I've been doing a lot of illustrations with with those floral designs and I decided to combine it with my tricycle illustration because I was like why not you know I mean that's the beauty of art is that I can explore ideas that most people have really explored so here it is
Okay, so I was gonna wait um, until I finished the sketch to pick up on the commentary, but uh, I figured I will take go ahead and take the time to uh, make a little commentaries on the sketches that I'm making. And um, this probably uh, this illustrate particular illustration marks my turnaround of sorts in my practice uh, with artwork. Um, for the longest time. I would typically do, you know, your traditional method of doing a quick sketch and then doing a clean sketch and then coloring things slowly, right? Um, but for a while now, I've actually like let go of this practice because I have a bad tendency to be married to the line sketch so much that sometimes, you know, even if the illustration uh, calls for it. And real quick before I go on with what I'm trying to say, uh, what was going on right now is that I trying to do mock up of um, fashion for the girl. Um, just trying to get like some ideas down. Um, and I'm basically basing her fashion on on men's fashion, so men's 17th century fashion instead of women's um, because I needed her to wear pants. Because, yeah, wearing a dress while you're driving a motorbike isn't very advisable. So, I based her outfit on a man's outfit. But, anyways, going back on the sketch and when I'm trying to talk about the sketch. Uh, typically, like, since I started practicing speed paints a lot, you know, which requires you to be more sculptural. Uh, I guess that's a word. <laughs> um... When you do your speed paint, speed paints, you typically start out with the form first, and then you kind of sculpt your details into that form. You know, so ever since I started practicing that, you know, I have let go of the practice of doing good clean sketches. Um, the last time I practiced it was the in the Star Wars uh, fan art that I did last year. When I did that nice clean uh, line sketch, that was I did that in 2014. And so when I picked up the illustration, the, the line sketch was pretty much already done. Uh, and I kind of just have to build on top of it. Um, this one, you know, again an artwork from 2014 that I picked up and to develop some more um, I did this line sketch all throughout 2018-2019 on and off um, more so last year than 2018 because um, that's when I switched was when I switched direction with this illustration uh, when I decided to go Rococo Baroque um, I did that last year and so, yeah, it's very refreshing for me to do like a good, just a simple line sketch, you know, because I got so used to doing the whole form first and then sculpting my details into that form that I forgot how refreshing it is to have a nice clean sketch such as this one, especially with the whole Baroque Rococo designs, you know, because I really have like a hard time, you know, forming the designs in my head uh, most people would just say well it's just like floral stuff you know that just like swirls and swishes like it should be like you know simple but it's really not you know like when I mean looking at the bike right now you can see like some of these designs are just so intricate that I'm like I, I really needed the good line sketch you know in order to pull it off and so this was immensely refreshing for me because like I said, I typically don't do it. Um, but yeah, I, I think I just now finished um, the line sketch. So I'm about to start my coloring process. So I'm basically making a selection around all of my line sketch so I could do a fill on a layer and have that as like my selection mask of sort basically um and yeah so now i'm about to uh start on the background which um real quick about this background uh the photos that i'm using in the background are from textures.com 
they have like a western series that i was borrowing and um so basically i was trying to figure out like what would be like the best spot for me to put my tricycle in it's a filipino tricycle this now turned into a filipino french baroque rococo tricycle you know and i was like well why not put it in like you know in the wild west setting you know kind of like a shout out to my american heritage of sort and so that's what i was trying to go for here but it didn't really look very good and then what ended up happening in the background was i did another speed paint um of this place in philippines in my old town san pablo uh we have this lake called san pablo lake it's a very touristy area and i did a painting um in one of the places of that area and that's what i just ended up using as a background because this whole western thing you know when i was getting critiques from people they said that it just didn't really work you know like you kind of have this 17th century looking vehicle and you have this wild west background like it just it was just too much i guess so they were like you know you know they were vetoed it so i switched it to uh the speed paint that i did um that stands alone as a separate painting and i just basically took that painting and put it as a background which i need to make a a, a video of it soon too because i actually love that speed paint um but yeah so that's what ended up happening in the background and plus i added some victorian era characters from another speed paint that i did that i have yet to post in my social media um so basically like uh what we just saw the wild west background that just pretty much went away and got replaced with two speed paints that i mishmash as a background and when i settled for that basically i see there's that painting right there uh you can see it right now i'm adjusting that paint and when i chose that i was like yeah that looks so much better and then i decided to pick this other speed painting that i have grab those victorian era looking characters and put them as people behind a, the background and after that you know everything was just pretty much shut as on the background part and so everything really just became an illustration on the bike and you can see right now i'm doing edits on on the bike itself on the body frame because the other comment that i got was that it doesn't look like everything is attached to the bike like that was one other comment it looked like um everything was separate from the bike and so um your typical filipino tricycle most of their attachments to the cab are hidden and so i kind of said it to be like that but since most people are familiar with the filipino tricycle they were like making comments about it so i decided to add like beam structures of some sort to just connect everything together with the bike and then when i have everything all set and ready to go i basically um just did a bunch of uh colors random uh, i took my favorite mech brush set it on hue variation and just put a bunch of hues in the bike which is what i'm doing right now see i'm adding like some blues to kind of represent the sky and then some darks and then i'm gonna merge all of that together with the line sketch and then i'm gonna slowly smudge everything into recognizable shapes so i can have a base paint that i could work on um so yeah that is what i'm about to do
so yeah I just now recently finished the whole blending thing and really the whole blending is just to get some uh, form of base paint you know where some pre-mixed uh, blending has already gone on so that's why I use a blending brush uh, somebody made a comment in the creator group about how like the blending brush is like a no-no like don't use the blending brush or whatnot and uh, I think part of the reason why she mentioned it is because uh, as a blending tool by itself um, it's not very effective you know you still have kind of have to go over things um, with the blending brush but I like doing it because it reminds me a lot of uh, pastels. Uh, when I used to do my pastels, that's kind of how you would blend things, or when you would blend colors in pastels, you kind of had to use the your fingers first, you know, to kind of like smudge some colors around, and then you kind of go back over with some pastels to kind of refine your blending, which is kind of like the method that I'm employing in my digital painting, where. You know, I just put a bunch of random colors uh, and then start smudging them around into like recognizable shades, you know, um, follow the outline that I have. And then as soon as all the colors are mishmashed, then I slowly go back over it and, you know, refine it some more. So it's very much like a pastel like approach is, is how I treat my digital painting. Um, so, yeah. Um, right now, uh, I, uh, have started detailing the body, but not too long ago, you just saw me do the window, which is on display right now. Um, the glass part of the motorbike, um, and how I did that was typically in, when you see windshields, uh, typically, like, the part that is kind of like opaque is like the part that has the most reflection or has the most light so in the case of like the the glass basically what I did was that I knew that the brightest part of the whole scene was going to be the sky so I put a bunch of stuff on the top part but left the blo the the bottom part pretty much uh, see-through like I didn't really put a whole lot on it um, so all of the uh, painting is on the top part um, as you can see right there and then like the bottom part is more transparent compared to the top part which is typically what you will see in windshields when you look at windshields of a car um, so I had like a reference and I was referring to when uh, I was looking at that I also got a comment about the windshields Fresnel effect like that it was too much so I had to like you know edit it later to kind of tone down the Fresnel effect um, and now I'm working on the top part uh, of the, the roof of the bike and I didn't like this Baroque design like I for the longest time when I was looking at it I just I did not like it and so I ended up editing this out and switching it to something else um, but yeah I'm ba I've basically started the whole detailing process and I've mentioned this before which I'll mention it now uh, my detailing process really is marking my edges, delineating my edges, making sure it's nice and clean and sharp and it reads. Uh, it doesn't really have to be super sharp. Uh, the most important thing is that my edges reads, you know. And then I accentuate the shadows if, you know, the shadows need to be accentuated. If uh, the dark areas are already looking good and dark, then I keep that as it is. But then there's some occasions where there's not enough dark, so I would put some darks on it. And then after I do that, I would do the highlights. Um, so those three steps really are like the most important steps for me in the detailing process. I just rinse repeat that over and over again in sections of the illustration that I want to work on. So, uh, so yeah. You'll just see me do that over and over again until I pretty much finish the illustration. Uh, here's me fixing the Fresnel effect because somebody said it was too bright. So I decided to add some colors to it uh, and tone it down a little bit. And you can see right now that I only did the top part of the windshield and the bottom part is 
there's nothing there and then of course I turned down opacity on it you know there's something like 60 or 70 so that the see-through effect happens so that people can tell oh yeah that's a glass you know because glass is very hard to illustrate it's very 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 hard to illustrate because the whole transparency effect so but it's really cool like when you pull it off nicely it, it looks really really cool so yeah
So I'm very close to pretty much finishing up um, detailing this illustration. Uh, as you can see, you know, all throughout the process, I pretty much I pretty much stayed true to the original line sketch. Um, there were, of course, some changes that I made, such as the the one on the rooftop. You know because that was kind of bothering me so I you know switched things around um, and I also did some edits on the girl's face because the girl's face was too bright you know so I kind of had to turn it down a little bit um, but yeah everything else was pretty much you know your standard rendering process um, when I did the sketch for the bike um, Everything was pretty much the same as the 3D part of it, um, but I deviated a lot on on the engine. You could actually see the original engine on the left right now, and you can see the engine that I have on the right. Um, the engine on the left is very; it looked really fancy, and so I decided to uh, basically take up old photos of regular tricycles in Philippines and um, use that as a basis for my engine so the engine is pretty much like a mishmash of some sort it's totally made up uh, so even though the body and the wheels are based on fully Croissant's 3d bike uh, the rest of it really is completely different um, when I started I, I left the engine part the last to be detailed because I was really afraid of it because it was kind of intricate like the way I did my line sketch so I was really afraid of like you know messing up the rendering of it and I thought it was gonna take me forever but I was pleasantly surprised that it went by very very quickly um, so that was a blast like doing because I thought it was gonna take me longer but it wasn't um, the only other changes that I remember making would be the Baroque design on the lower right, right next to the uh, rear wheel of the tricycle. Uh, I mean, that one, when I started defining it, I kind of added more to it. So it's a little different from the original sketch. Um, and then... I think the passenger cab pretty much stayed the same uh, all the way throughout the illustration. It was just me pretty much following uh, my line sketch basically. And everything else was really like that, just me following the line sketch. Um, the other thing that I forgot to mention that I changed on the bike was the the cover plate or of the wheels uh, you see on the wheel right now on the one on the right the front wheel um, you see that uh, I don't know what you call that part I I'm calling it a cover plate but I'm not really sure that's that's what you would call it but it's blue right now and all of the bike is pink right to kind of you know go along with the whole female driver whatnot and uh, yeah that thing on top of the wheel its cover or whatnot is blue and so I switched that to pink at some point in time just to kind of make it go along with the engine uh, so yeah that ended up pink I added some uh, floral flourishes on on the gasoline tank of the bike because I thought that would be cool uh, which I sketched that a while back but I really thought that that design, me adding that part of the design of the bike was really, really cool. You know, kind of integrate the whole idea of the whole Baroque Rococo flourishes. You know, not only is it on the body of the tricycle, but it's on the actual bike too. So, and here I am detailing that uh, part that I was talking about that I slightly switched around. Uh, I think I added more uh, grooves into it compared to the original one um, but that came out looking nicer than I thought um, the flags that's hanging uh, behind the rear of the bike 
I originally intended for those flags to be like the Texas flag and the Filipino flag. Uh, but they look so much the same. <laughs> but there's really, like, if you look at the Filipino flag and the Texas flag, they both have the same colors, white, blue, and red. And since the flag is kind of, like, down, um, it's really hard to tell which flag it is. So I didn't even really bother, like, fully detailing it. Like, I, I was going to try and make it obvious as to what flag that is, but then I kind of just gave up, and I was like... I'm just going to put a flag there. So, I don't like that part of the illustration, if you ask me, honestly. Uh, part of me kind of feels like getting rid of it, but it's there now, so I might as well leave it. So, yeah. But, um, overall, like, if I was to, you know, assess my overall design of the Baroque, it's, again, iffy. You know, I think I mentioned this when I did the I'm OK to Go illustration, Part of the reason why I'm so interested in doing all this Baroque flourishes is because it's so hard to make it look good in 2D. Like, I mean, looking at this illustration, it looks like it, it's functional and it looks like it can exist in the real world. But when you're painting it and you're trying to wrap your head around it, it's, it's just... It's hard because it's 2D. If, if I was sculpting this, this would make much more sense, you know? Because then I could just sort of rotate around the model and say, Oh yeah, this floral flourishes will go here. This groove will grow, will go there, you know? So yeah, doing this in 3D, if I was just really sculpting this, it'd be way easier. <laughs> but it's a static 2D. And so having to like mentally wrap my head around as to how some of these you know uh, curves will curve around another object it's it's really difficult so it's an exercise in very very technical th thinking <laughs> i would have to say but it was one making it um again uh it's an all right like floral design but overall like it's awesome like i love this illustration uh i'm really happy with the way it came out um I just feel like some of the like flourishes can be improved upon, but you know overall it looks good. So yeah. Thank you guys for watching this with me. I will see you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Good night.